Hello, I'm Frank Cassidy, and I'm going to introduce you to an online newspaper for the public service called PS News. Coming from Canberra, most of us know that the biggest elephant in our city is the public service. In fact, there are two elephants in our room. The National Public Service, which has about 60,000 workers here in Canberra, and our own ACT Public Service, which has a little over 20,000. And that's 80,000 people. And apart from lassoing them one by one as they go out to their office blocks at lunchtime every day, we really, there's really no way of communicating with them uh, once they're locked into their high-rise departments. That is until PS News came along. Dating back to the year 2000, but officially launched in November 2005, PS News started life at the same time as the internet took off in the public sector. Back in 2005, the first online edition of PS News was sent out to 1,500 email addresses that were publicly available in the Commonwealth Public Service. The email message directed them to 20 pages or so of news about the public service that we put on the internet at the address psnews.com.au. At this point, I should mention that I spent about 20 years inside the, public, the Commonwealth Public Service. I studied advertising in Melbourne and reckon I knew a bit about how the public service worked. During my time with the government, I managed the advertising and marketing side of a thing called Life Be In It, which was a popular sort of um, cartoon program to push national fitness. And we got, uh, it was very successful. We got many Australians walking, running, and playing, which they weren't going to do otherwise. Because of the success of Life Be In It, I was also asked to build up Australia Day. And back in the early 1980s, we needed it because Back at that time, our national anthem, when I was asked to do this job, was God Save the Queen. Uh, Australia Day was celebrated on the Monday following the 26th of January. It was a long weekend every year. There were three competing Australian of the Year awards, and our national colours were blue and gold, not green and gold as they are now. Now, there's no need to point out all those things have been fixed, and the interesting thing is they were all fixed from inside the public service. So they can get some things right some of the time. I then left the public service when they reclassified my position to a level that was far too high for a 34-year-old, and I went out on my own as a self-unemployed writer. And it didn't take me long to realise the only subject I could write about was the public service, and that's why I'm here tonight. Um, after that initial mail-out of the 1500 Commonwealth Public Service, it soon became obvious that we had struck a nerve. Within a month, almost a thousand people had signed up to join the subscription list, and six months later, we've gone past 5,000. And the average size of the weekly editions had grown to about 30 pages. At that time, I started to wonder whether what was good for one public service might also be good for another public service. So I did a little bit of, bit of research. To my amazement and delight, I discovered that the people employed in the public sector make up almost one-sixth of the entire Australian workforce. That's 1.9 million of them out of about 12 million workers. And we were only interested in... I'm going backwards. <coughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Um, we were only interested in about 1.2 million of them. We're not greedy. Uh, the people who work for the Commonwealth or the state governments. Local councils employ about 700,000, and that's the rest of them on the PS News' radar. In 2006, we launched a separate edition for the New South Wales Public Service, and we're thrilled to see it follow the same trend as the Commonwealth did. <coughs> Six months later, we added Victoria, the same result. And over the following years, we brought all the states and territories on board until today, we published nine editions across the country <coughs> with news and information content nudging around 100 pages a week. And we do it all from here in Canberra, two editions in Canberra as well. From the initial 1,500 addresses, we now have more than uh, 187,000 subscribers. Every single one of them has had to come to us to be added to our list. In the 12, since, 12 years since we sent out our first edition, we've never had a single month in which the circulation hasn't gone up. And it still increases every month to this day. And just for reference, the last time I looked, the Sydney Morning Herald had around 150,000 subscribers. So we're pulling our weight in big company. Of course, they charge $20 a month to subscribe. We can share our news for free. But like the Herald, we also make our money by introducing advertisers to our readers. 
So, having been born, bred and brought up here in the nation's biggest public service city, exporting information about the public service back to the States, as PS News does, is a pretty appropriate export product to come out of Canberra. And I think we might have earned the right to be standing here tonight with uh, all these homegrown, ambitious ideas. Thank you very much for listening.